as we left off last time, The Amazing Spider-Man 1977 promised to be a very short series because Spider-Man is plunging to his doom and there's nothing to grab onto. <laughs> Well, foo, that's the receiver for the tracker he put on that car earlier. Or it was. Now the bomb is out there somewhere and he can't follow it. Bo and I will go ahead in the small jet. Angel, you and Benson put the limousine on a cargo flight and stay with it at all times. If you came of age in a post 9-11 world, it's probably hard to understand what airport security was like in the 70s. Airline hijackings had been happening since 1931, but not that many happened in the U.S. Suddenly, around the mid-70s, there was a rash of hijackers wanting to fly to Cuba, and in response, the country tightened some security and put more air marshals on planes, but for the most part, we still trusted people. That all changed in one day, but that day is still far in the future for our characters. At this time, you could put a radioactive car on a plane and get away with it. Next time you're in a mile-long line waiting for TSA screening, think about that. Gentlemen, I'd say we have a situation here. The bomb were to explode in the city, what could we expect? If it's still in the city. Well, let's say it is. Ten pounds of plutonium could have a yield of as much as 15 kilotons. Now, if that were to explode in Wall Street in the middle of a weekday, if the public hears about this, there'll be unbelievable panic. This must be kept out of the newspapers as long as possible. You understand that, Parker? Yeah, I understand. Peter is a part-time, freelance photographer. First and foremost, he's a science student. He understands this considerably better than you do. Well, I guess this lets you off the hook. But not Spider-Man. Oh, not quite. He could still be involved. Parker, let me ask you something. Deep down, do you really think this bomb will explode? Well, let me put it to you this way. As far as we know, since 1945, Everyone who has attempted to explode an atomic bomb has succeeded on the first try. All they need is the plastique, and there's so much of that stuff on the black market, you could practically walk around and pick up pieces of it off the ground. Rita, do you think your friend on the force could check on a California license for me? Now, are you ready? Uh, yeah. Go ahead. If he can find out who this guy is, maybe he can sort out where they intend to take the bomb. She'll get right on it. Gail, what a pleasant surprise. Not for long. Why, is something the matter? You just dumped me at the hospital. No, 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 you dumped me. Remember, I came out of the men's room and you were gone. Wrong O. Oh, you went out the window because I went in after you. You fall. Okay, right. I had to meet somebody. Right. You met Spider-Man, didn't you? Yes, I did. Then why can't I meet him? Because you can't. Let me help you, Peter. Repeat after me. He doesn't do interviews. He doesn't want the publicity. He's more effective behind the scenes. The only reason he lets me take pictures is because he knows I'm a broke college student and he took pity on me. Think you could say that convincingly? I would hope so because it's mainly true. Peter, as long as I am a working professional in this business, I know how to keep professional secrets. My paper wants this interview pretty bad. Peter, I might be able to get you more money. It's not the money. It's the fact that he can't be two guys at the same time, as if he can tell her that. The phone is Rita with the information he wanted. California 4810LR is registered to the White Import Export Company of Los Angeles. I knew it. Thank you, Rita. Thank you very much. You are terrific. Ah, oh, you're just saying that. But you're right. Later. Propose, Peter. At least ask her out. In 1977, I was just heading off to Bible school where I wouldn't meet my wife for another two years, so I was available. If he wouldn't propose to her, I might have. What's up? I just figured out where the plutonium is. Our director was Ron Satloff, and I want to go on record telling him that any time he wants to zoom in on Joanna Cameron... He has my blessing. I need some expense money. You see, I found out where the plutonium is. Really? 
Where? Los Angeles. If you think you can con me into a trip to California, you can forget it. I'm not trying to con you, Mr. Jameson. It's just that that's where the plutonium is, and the only way I can afford to get there is if the bugle sends me. You've got as much chance of going to California at my expense as you have of walking upside down to that ceiling. So you're saying it's a sure thing. I would say show him, Peter, but Jonah would insist it's some kind of trick. J.J. has a particularly detailed relationship with money. What, what I'm about to tell you, the bugle cannot print, and neither can the examiner. We can't print what? The missing plutonium has been used to build a bomb. An atomic bomb? If you don't believe me, ask Captain Barbera. Jonah says, but what does California have to do with it? Peter says, Spider-Man told me that's where the bomb is. Wrong word, Peter. I wouldn't believe anything that that weirdo tells me. I would. Tell you what, Peter. I will get the examiner to finance your trip if you get me that interview with Spider-Man and if, when you're on the West Coast, you get a story, my paper runs it with my byline. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. You're still working for the Bugle, remember? Does that mean you'll send me to California? You're holding a gun at my head. He isn't, she is. And it's not a gun, it's an atomic bomb. Peter just told you that. Not a gun, Mr. Jameson, just another newspaper. To Jonah, that's worse than a gun. <sighs> All right, you win. Peter, I'll get you more money. Money isn't everything. He's right, money isn't everything. Giving up so soon? I'm kidding. May I use your phone? Help yourself. He can't shake her that easily. She also has an expense account. Thank you very much, Mr. Jameson. I'll get you some great pictures. I promise you, I really will. And I'll call you, I'll call you every single night. You won't have to. I'm going with you. You're what? Why do you think I'd trust you uh, 3,000 miles away with my expense account? <laughs> I told you he has a particularly detailed relationship with money. Even when he gives it to you, he still thinks it's his. You don't want to see him at a Starbucks. Arena. Yeah, boss. Oh, you uh, make two reservations for Parker and me. We're flying to Los Angeles. Uh, are you sure you don't want to make that three? Three? Why three? Because I just called my editor, and I'm going with you. So it's off to Los Angeles, which is probably where we're filming anyway. Makes for a short flight. They don't even have time to give you peanuts. That'll be $2, please. $2 for a glass of orange juice? And for service with a smile. Jonah doesn't believe in smiling. He says it makes his face hurt. Oh, there. There you go. Oh, and please bring him a glass of lemonade without the sugar. Without the sugar? Won't that be a little sour? Uh-huh. It should match your disposition perfectly. Where's Parker? Right. It shouldn't be taking him so long. Why don't you stay here, and I'll go see if I can find him. He's on the roof, scanning the city with his newly repaired tracking receiver. Peter, what's that? What's what? That thing in your hand. Oh, this? Um, it, it's a light meter. She's seen enough light meters to know that's not one. To tell you the truth, this belongs to Spider-Man. It picks up a signal from the homing device that he attached to that white limousine I told you about. Are you getting a signal? Well, yeah, it's got a range of 15 miles. You mean that'll take us to them? It should. Peter, tell me something truthfully. Are you Spider-Man? <laughs> Do I look like the kind of guy that could run up and down the side of a building? <laughs> no. I don't know what got into me. <laughs> Whatever got into you, it wasn't your reporter instincts. If they had been working, you would have noticed that he said everything except no. But he's here at the hotel, isn't he? As a matter of fact, he's a lot closer to you than you'd ever expect. And if she doesn't translate that into, yes, I'm Spider-Man, she needs to turn in her expense account. That was the office. Some man with a very youthful voice was inquiring about a white limousine registered to the White Import-Export Company. Maybe somebody spotted it outside the kid's apartment. You know the California license number. We did lose one of the New York plates. They had a little help with that, but there's no reason to tell them. Where's the car now? Angel and Benson are in Hollywood. 
Well, when they come back, I want you to go over the car very carefully. You don't think anybody could have followed us out here? <laughs> Anything can happen. And with this much at stake, I don't see how we can be too cautious. That means eventually they'll find the tracker. Let's hope Peter can zero in on the location before they do. Robert Alda started out singing and dancing in vaudeville, but got into movies pretty much as quickly as possible. He did loads of movies and television and was an excellent actor in his own right. But by the 70s, he had been eclipsed by his even more talented son, Alan. Speaking as a dad, I don't think Robert minded too much. One billion dollars in gold. Not one million. One billion. The mayor was going to die. Well, he's certainly no biker. <laughs> yeah, he wants it delivered to a bank in Costa Rica. You still think your Spider-Man is involved? Oh, that guy's off the wall, but this is pretty big. Uh, I don't know. New York doesn't have that kind of money. Not just New York, he's blackmailing the whole country. White commented earlier that with a prize this unique, they needed to do something with style. I guess that's what he meant. Don't put it up for sale, offer it back to its owners. For a price. In 1977, the average price of gold was about $160 an ounce. A billion dollars in gold would weigh roughly 400,000 pounds and occupy 330 cubic feet of space. That's bigger than my whole house. I hope Mr. White has his own gigantic cargo plane, because otherwise it'll cost him a billion dollars just to ship it. Parker, this is ridiculous. We came to Los Angeles to look for an atomic bomb, not to ride around Hollywood like a bunch of tourists. Leave him alone, Mr. Jameson. He knows what he's doing. Not many people can get away with talking to Jonah like that, but Gail has him by the short hairs. So does Peter, for that matter, but Peter is much more polite than Gail is. Oh, really? Do you know how many cars there are in Los Angeles? Do you realize what the odds are against our finding a white limousine? The odds are not as bad as you think, are they, Peter? No, they're not bad at all. As a matter of fact, I think we're getting warm. In fact, they're downright scorching. Look, it's them. Those are the two that tried to kidnap us. You better call the police. No, there's no time. They're leaving. We'll have to follow. Do you know how to tail someone without being spotted? I'll take that as a no. They must have spotted us. I wonder how. Parker, what are you doing? I have the same question. He has the tracker, and there's no way these guys are going to lead them to the bomb under these circumstances. If he'd been thinking, he would have turned the other way and let them think it was a false alarm, then tracked them on a parallel street. I'll bet Gail could have told him how to do that, so I wonder why she didn't. Instead, we have a very foolish car chase, and I still wonder where Peter thinks they're going to lead him. What's his goal here? I'm not sure he's sorted that out yet. I've had enough of this. Let's see if we can puncture his balloon. Those are some expensive balloons. White is so rich, he was able to buy that car from James Bond with all the gadgets still in it. Peter doesn't care. He's determined to stay with them. I think he's assuming the bomb is still in the car. What do you do? Follow them on foot? Of course not. Parker! Wait! Hi, folks. Can I help you? Uh, yeah. Do you mind if I try this out? Well, sure. Hop on. Get the feel of it. Fire it out. What are you doing? Could I just take it for a test run? Well, I don't know. Oh, it's okay. I'll leave my sister here as collateral. Your sister? If I don't bring it back, you can keep her. She's a pain in the neck anyway. Hey, wait a minute. What are you doing? Oh, listen, everything will be fine. Our dad's right behind us, and he'll take care of everything. At least we're keeping it in the family. Come back here! Uh, she said you'd take care of everything, John. 
you are their father, aren't you? Their father? Parker! Is there one of these contraptions here that, that I can ride? I've got to chase those doggone kids. You two are grounded. As a matter of fact, our man does have something for Jonah. Not gonna lie, it looks like fun. Now, does he have any idea at all where they went? Peter is staying with the car while Gail is staying with Peter. As far as we know, Jonah is just staying. Peter follows the car to a movie studio backlot where it seems to have vanished. Oh, sorry, I'm looking for Forrest Tucker and Larry Storch. I don't know how you did it, but Angel doesn't fail twice. Come a little closer and he'll show you how he did it. There has to be a first time for everything. Yeah! Not impressed. He already saw that in his spider sense. Let's have a good old western showdown, except as far as we can tell, Spider-Man is the only one with something that shoots. You know, there are better ways to stop that thing. I suppose it's a little late to tell her that. Okay, now that she's out of the way, let's deal with this guy. He doesn't realize that not only does his foe have the reflexes of a spider, his spider sense can tell him what's coming. And then there's his proportionate spider's strength. Put it all together and it makes guys like you do things like that. And things like that. In case you haven't sorted it out, nunchucks don't intimidate him. He toys with this guy for a bit, but he has other things he needs to do today. Such as checking on Gale. Angel is climbing up into that loft after her. This is one time you probably shouldn't pull your punches, Peter. Where are we going? To find some place where you'll be safe. Wait in there, I'll be back, and keep out of sight. They should be looking for the car and the bomb, but these two guys are still being a nuisance. I told him not to pull his punches. Okay, he found the car. There's not much he can do about it, so he returns to the motorbike and his street clothes. Where's Parker? I don't know. I've been looking all over for you two. Well, that's why you didn't find them. They haven't been all over. You two missed all the excitement. Spider-Man was here. He was. And I got to see him in action. He was terrific. He went swinging through the barn, grabbed me out of this great big guy's hands. We went flying through the air and landed in a haystack. What's that? 
It's a transmitter. It belongs to Spider-Man. It fell off when they sideswiped that hitching rail. And I don't like to say it, but Peter did this to himself. If he hadn't tried to play high-speed chase and had stayed off their radar, he'd still be able to track the car. Where have you been? We had a problem. Someone's been following us. I think it was that kid, Parker. So it was him checking out the car. We lost him, but then that Spider-Man showed up again. Spider-Man? But you just said... I did, I did. I threw him off the building. Fifteen stories. There's no way he could have made it. This is very disturbing. Spider-Man could be dangerous. I think we'll have to accelerate the timetable. Again, this is all happening because Peter Parker doesn't watch enough television. If he did, he'd know how to track someone in a car. And he just called again. If the government doesn't agree to his demands, by 6 p.m. New York time tomorrow, he says he'll explode the bomb where it'll do the most damage. What? Well, that has to mean Manhattan. You know, here I am in Los Angeles acting like some fool tourist, and everything's happening in New York. I'll get the first plane out of here. I can't read it. Please do. They can sort this out a lot better with you on the other side of the continent. Why would the people with the bomb be in Los Angeles if they plan to explode it in Manhattan? Maybe they don't have the bomb at all. No, that's not it. We must be missing something. Yes, the last flight to New York. No, wait, sir. We can't go. The bomb is here, believe me. Jonah and Gail are both assuming that the most damage means physical damage and lives lost. There are other, even more critical types of damage. It's just got to be a reason. <laughs> Can you read upside down, Peter? Your answer is right there. Mr. Jameson is really going to be steaming when he finds out we left the hotel without him. Well, there's no other way. He slows me, us, down. Sort of a long shot, isn't it? Well, it's the only clue we have. I can just see them walking in and saying, Can you tell us who those two guys on the back lot that tried to beat us up are? Hi, can I help you? Well, I hope so. There was a white limousine parked out front yesterday. I believe it belongs to a man named Mr. White. Do you know how I could get in touch with him? Uh, what do you want to see him about? You do know him? Yes, he owns the building and he manages most of the recording artists who record here. All roads lead back to Mr. White, which isn't surprising. I think Peter is 100% sure White has the bomb. But you haven't answered my question. Oh, well, my friend here is a singer, and we wanted to see him about managing her. Oh, that's right. We heard that he's just a genius at getting your career started. Uh-huh. Want to wait here just for a minute? I get the feeling she doesn't believe him. That's what he said. Keep him there. We're only three minutes away. Okay. As usual, I was right. Gail scoffs at the idea that she's a singer, but they'll go poke around anyway as if she is. But a wild man loses control. I don't recognize that song and I can't seem to find any information about it. Help? They're in Studio 2. Get him down here alone. Okay. Take care of the girl I'll take care of him. His buddy has the more pleasant job, but this is personal for Angel. He wants to see you alone. When the river oh. Falls, oh, it's okay. I'll be right back. Landing. When the night flyer can't see the light. I find myself wondering why his spider sense isn't going off like a klaxon right now. You say you love me and everything's right. You say you love me and everything's right. I... Gail has been pretty non-physical so far. Does she have any surprises up her sleeve? He's in there. <laughs> And if that guy is going after Gale, he has a fair idea who he's going to find on the other side of that door. And Angel will have to wait. Hey, where are you going? He ran back into the studio.
Unfortunately for Peter, Angel doesn't want to wait. And I have the answer to my question. No, Gail doesn't have any surprises up her sleeve. Where did they take her? Look, what do you want? Look, I don't have time to play games with you. Are you crazy or something? Leave me alone. Get out of here. If you don't tell me where they took her, I'm going to be the craziest person you ever saw. You've heard it said that crazy people climb the walls. Just wait. I'm calling the police. That's a good idea. I have a feeling they'd like to talk to you. Me? Why? Well, you are an accomplice to a kidnapping. I don't know anything about any kidnapping. Oh, no? I think you do. But we'll let the police decide whether you're lying or not. Listen, I don't know anything about your girlfriend. I swear it. Where is she? Mr. White. That's a big house. It's just outside of town. It's in the hills. A house is a very, very, very fine house. Very nice. Why do I have to dress this way? Two reasons. One, because I like women in bikinis. And two, I feel safer when I know there's no place for them to hide any weapons. But mainly, he just wants to ogle you. And as much as he insists on surrounding himself with sex objects, I'm making an educated guess that he's impotent. LeBeau, get the device. We have an errand to do. You're really going to do it? You're really going to kill hundreds of thousands of people? I honestly hope I won't have to. The only planes capable of carrying all that gold were military transports. In 1977, the United States wasn't on the best of terms with Costa Rica because the latter was helping to funnel illicit weapons to El Salvador. Under those conditions, I doubt Costa Rica would allow an American military plane of any kind to land within their borders, so he's asking the impossible. He could demand they send it by ship, but then the authorities have a cabillion ways to mess that up for him. So yeah, impossible. I think he wants to set the bomb off to compensate for his impotence. One thing I don't understand. Why Los Angeles when you made your demands in New York? Simple. You work for a newspaper, Gail. Read one once in a while. He doesn't even have to get the bomb especially close to the president. That's the advantage of going nuclear. Peter is headed for White's house, but he'll get there his own way. Spiders don't need roads. White has staked out a new building with an easy blast range of where the president will be speaking. He'll plant the bomb there. What do we do now? Now we wait. They won't have to wait long. They just didn't realize what they were waiting for. That is one hard head. Spider-Man doesn't need to pull his punches with this guy. Okay, maybe he doesn't need to punch him at all. That is much easier on the knuckles. I think they're both looking forward to this.
And now that they're a good distance away from Gale, Spidey will go to work. I had a hunch Spidey was screwing with him, letting him think he had a chance. Gale fills him in about the bomb and the president. The speech is at 3. It's 2.30 now. The president's plane just landed. Spider-Man has an idea. He tells Gale to call it in. They may or may not believe her, but protocol says get the president out of there regardless. He's off to try and stop the bomb. Real five. That should give us plenty of time to meet the helicopter and get a safe distance away. Look, you can still change your mind. I don't want to do it either. But I will if they force me. It's all their fault you stole a dummy bomb, converted it to a real one, and decided to hold the country hostage. How dare they? But thanks to a combination of his big mouth and his disdain for women, Spider-Man knows where he is. He just had to get there. It's a stunt to publicize a new rock group, like the one Evil Knievel plans to do. You mean dive out of a plane without a parachute and land in a haystack? Right, except I'm going to land on top of a building on an airbag. The only thing is, I'll have to pay you later. Don't worry about it. It's on me. Come on, I'll find somebody to take you out. How many more chances like this will he ever get? Take some pictures and use them to publicize your business. The service that the heroes use. It can't miss. really is a genuine genius, but he didn't have to be one to figure out who's in that chopper. Shake him loose! Shake him loose! No. Shake! Rattle and roll! Not exactly. And the pilot's efforts aren't working. The president's speech is going on without interruption because for some reason the authorities aren't taking Gale's warning seriously. Well, at least White and his man were willing to deposit Spider-Man right where he needs to be. By that watch, he has a whole minute to disarm this thing. Each of those little divots on the bomb is a piece of plastic explosive and they all need to go off at once to make the bomb go critical. Pull the wires out of the detonators. Or that works too. White is being philosophical about it. LeBeau isn't. I was lucky. I like another shot at him. Relax, LeBeau. If I have my way, we'll be meeting Spider Man again. If you're expecting to outsmart him, you'll need to go back to the black market and find yourself a bigger brain. He's got you majorly outclassed. That's a great picture. The police must have been searching every rooftop in the area. How did you get that? Oh, I'm sorry. That's privileged information. What you mean is that Spider-Man helped you. My lips are sealed. Really, they are. Come take a closer look. Well, it doesn't matter how you did it. This really makes the whole trip worthwhile. As a matter of fact, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna let you have this whole suite here for the rest of the week at my expense. Who are you and what have you done with Jonah? That is really nice of you. Thank you. 
But, Mr. Jameson, today is Friday. There are only two more days left in the week. Well, what do you want for nothing? It's getting late. Okay, I was concerned for a second. That's still uncharacteristically generous, but this was an uncharacteristic assignment. I still didn't get my interview with Spider-Man. Well, you got to see him in action. You should be able to get a good story out of that. Peter, let's be honest. Where were you after they took me from the recording studio? Well, I was, um... I, I was looking for you, of course. Looking for me, but you found Spider-Man. <laughs> well, actually, he found me. How? How? Peter will hem and haw around and come up with some lame answer, but he really only needs one word. I'll even spell it for him. I-D-U-N-N-O. Pronounced? I don't know. It covers a multitude of uncomfortable questions. You know, I'm not going to give up. You know, I was kind of hoping you wouldn't. No, Parker. You're not bad. But you know Spider-Man. Well, how do you know? You've never seen me in tights. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> but if you're willing to put some on, I'm willing to reconsider. You know, I half expect him to do it on the off chance that he might get that kiss. And our bad guy is still out there, but if we do wrap up his storyline, it'll happen another day. White left the door wide open for that, and he can come back any time. He is a great villain. Gail won't be back, which is too bad, because I'd really like to see another showdown between her and White. If Spider-Man gets the henchman out of the way so it's one-on-one, -on -one, she can take him. Since she's Isis, I suppose she could call up a huge windstorm and blow his helicopter to Paradise Island and let Wonder Woman take care of him. But that's not her style. Mother, please. I'd rather do it myself. Pain in the neck anyway. Bye bye. Doesn't believe. Yep, but they in the but catch her back up and this. I die, die, die.